A local activist working with the Robert F. Kennedy Jr. campaign to get him on the New York ballot just gave up the whole game saying she wants Republicans unite behind Kennedy to defeat President Joe Biden in the general election. Rita Palmer was speaking to a local Hudson Valley group after being hired by the Kennedy campaign as New York State Director about three weeks ago. And now I present to you a film I have entitled Dry Snitching for Dummies. So there's no Biden voters in the House, right? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Things, I guess, will change over time because you do have to only pick one candidate at the end of the day. But the Kennedy voter and the Trump voter, the enemy, our mutual enemy is Biden. If the Republicans just accepted the fact that New York, Maryland, Chicago, uh, Illinois, California, New Jersey, Connecticut, most of the Northeast is going to go blue, why wouldn't we put our vote to Bobby and at least get rid of Biden and get those 28 electoral votes in New York. The card's a little wrong. It says 26 electoral votes. Give those 28 electoral votes to Bobby rather than to Biden, thereby uh, reducing Biden's 270. What is wrong with these kids today? I mean, we was doing dirt back when we were young, but but the self snitching is just out of hand. Like if you're not flossing on Instagram, doing the money phone or putting all the money on your bag, here you are talking to the Hudson Valley group and exposing the whole scheme. <laughs> you know, the scheme still works even if you don't lay it out step by step, but I appreciate the honesty, and by honesty, I mean the stupidity of the entire thing. And by the way, I especially appreciated this part. Since Biden is counting on us with Bobby in the mix, my, my thought is for the Republicans. See, Bobby right now, he's pulling from both sides. Right now, he's actually pulling a little bit more from Biden, which explains why the DNC is kind of ganging up on him. They have a special committee to go after independent candidates. Yeah, they say independent candidates, like non-affiliated candidates, they really mean Bobby, because Bobby's the only third party that anybody's taking seriously. So they developed a committee just to go after him and to get him off of the ballot. Biden ganging up means him trying to get independent voters. Wow, I didn't know winning voters was called ganging up. I, di I didn't. I didn't realize that's what that's called. What? Well, like we just respecting corners? Like this is the wire? She. Like this is. This is. These are my corners over here. These are. These are my voters over here. Don't you come over on my territory getting my voters? Aren't you the newest on the scene? Aren't you the first one to hit the block? So really, these aren't even your corners. You supposed to be you supposed to be over in new territory over there by the gas station trying to see if you can win some new customers. Isn't that what you're supposed to be doing? And and also, I love the fact that she's accusing Biden uh, of ganging up on Kennedy by trying to get independent voters, even though she opens this entire thing by talking about how she's in cahoots with the Trump campaign to get Biden out. So so that's not ganging up, but but what Biden is doing is ganging up. I mean, the delusion is so strong. If you didn't know that she was on the Trump train before, you definitely should know it now by the sheer level of the delusion. That is the highest level. By the way, um, just in case you were wondering what all the significance of this might be, the Kennedy voter and the Trump voter, the enemy, our mutual enemy is Biden. Whether you support Bobby or Trump, we all oppose Biden. 270 wins the election. If you don't get to 270, if nobody gets to 270, then Congress picks the president, right? Right now we have a majority of Republicans in Congress. So who are they gonna pick? Who are they gonna pick? If it's a Republican Congress, they'll pick Trump. So we're rid of Biden either way. Now, I did occasionally attend classes at Columbia University over the course of four years before they gave me a piece of paper that I, I, think is in, I think is in the basement somewhere. But I will brag about having whenever it suits me. I also lived there most of my adult life because uh, they don't charge you to ride the subway, you know, at least not officially.
What I know about New York, it doesn't really sound like the best candidate for this whole scheme. He's more of a classic liberal, classic Democrat from back in the 60s, and they aren't quite as repulsive as what's going on right now with the Democratic Party. Okay, so New York is really a, a good environment for doing just this because uh, the combination of Republicans and independents almost equal half. The Democrats are just over, they're like 51, 52 percent. But between the Republicans and the independents, we, we get to almost 50 percent. So the, if, the, if the Democrats are moving in our direction and the Republicans, you know, accept the fact that New York is going to go blue, then we can definitely give Bobby the 28 and chip away at Biden's 270. In fact, all we need is like four blue states and there's no way he can get in. What? I mean, the trees must be Republican upstate uh, and clearly the rats must be independents in the city. I don't know how they got to 49%. Now, now could this whole thing actually work? We've had prominent third party candidates in the past. How have they done? Well, Ralph Nader almost definitely decided the 2000 uh, election uh, for uh, uh, against Al Gore and for George Bush because he received like 90,000 votes in Florida. And that, that uh, election was decided by fewer than 600 votes. So if you do the math, I think you can say some of those Nader voters would have voted for Al Gore. Uh, and so that one for sure. Uh, Hillary Clinton supporters in 2016 say the Green Party candidate Jill Stein badly hurt them in three states. It's harder to tell there because, because you'd have to say every Jill Stein voter would have voted for Hillary Clinton. But it definitely had an outcome on how uh, close those states were. Now, here's what pisses me off about this entire thing. You have lots of Americans out here looking at our two-party system, looking at our two candidates, and trying to decide between the least of two evils because they don't believe that either one truly represents their interests. It's like trying to decide what college to go to. Meanwhile, you really just want to take a year off to sober up and then, and then party for the rest of the 11 months. Ideally, this is a true meritocracy and you can have a candidates or a party or a movement that gains grassroots support and people push them. It, mul it might take multiple election cycles. It probably will take multiple election cycles to actually rise to the point where they could challenge the two party system. But that would be our American ideal. And what you have right here is people actively using the disenchantment that people feel with our two party system and the realistic fact that voting for a third party candidate pulls a vote from either Republicans or Democrats and will benefit one of the two of them. You have people that are using that dilemma of whether or not to vote with their hearts or vote with their heads to benefit the two party system. She. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, maybe she just went rogue. I mean, the campaign isn't necessarily guilty of what she has planned. And for that, I present to you a film I've entitled Self Snitching 102. People kept continually telling me, wow, that's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. So, you know, I'm kind of mulling it around. What should I do with this? What should I do with this? And then I got, got a call from the campaign and, you know, they were going to hire me as their New York State director. And I said, okay, I, I, I want to take the job, but I'm going to tell you right now that this is part of my messaging. And if I'm allowed to preach that, if I'm allowed to, you know, get that message out there, then yeah, I will definitely work for the campaign, but I don't want to be restricted in what I say, because I think this is a really winning strategy. And my boss said, well, okay. And if that wasn't good enough, we got 103. One oh four. One oh five. This woman was literally there on January sixth, according to her own accounts, because she loves self snitching, but has since deleted any photos of that day from her social media, which by the way is a telltale sign of where you are on January 6th, the missing day. Oh, let's see. It looks like on January 3rd and 4th, you were gathering supplies in order to take a road trip. And then here you are on your way down to DC with Trump flags on your car. And mysteriously, January 6th is missing. But here you are on the 7th on your way back home from what appears to be DC. 
You want to hide it like a little bit better than that? I mean, I was better at hiding stuff like that when I had to delete stuff in my phone because I didn't know if somebody was going to break in it when I was in the shower. You can't just delete the incriminating stuff. Message. Also take note, there's not a lot of long-standing RFK Jr. supporters. Naturally, some of the people would be former Trump supporters or former Biden supporters. But in the hierarchy of Trump supporters, you have the people that were independents that were, were swayed by maybe some tax benefits. And then you have the people that are lifelong Republicans that just couldn't see fit to cross the aisle. And then you have the people who feel like Trump really aligns with their values, or at least is pushing their conservative values and what he's done with the courts and things like that. So you decide to stay on the Trump train. And then you have the people that have flags on their front yard, flags on their cars, people that were there on January 6th. These are the people you decided to pull from in order to hire for your campaign. And by the way, you can't even fire her now because according to her, you signed off on all of this. I mean, this is bad. I mean, I haven't seen anybody done this bad since, I mean, well, your wife Cheryl remembers. You pull their asshole open, step into their asshole, close the door behind you, take a spray paint can, right? Uh-huh. Larry was here. You spray paint, Larry was here, wash me, all that kind of shit. Fuck his whole asshole up. These snicker bars, throw some paper on the floor, read a newspaper, boil the paper up the newspaper, and throw the newspaper on the floor. Mm -hmm. Fuck his whole asshole up, you know what I'm saying? Then you yeah. open that asshole one more time. Open it again, open that asshole again. Oh, step out his ass and leave that motherfucker wide open so he know you've been there.